Hi, welcome to the MicroMD EMR user training for two-way lab interface. There are a few things that need to be configured before beginning using a two-way lab interface. One of the first things is that the user will have to make sure their desktop navigator is set up to include orders if they're going to be processing lab specimens or generating orders as well as test results if they're going to be reviewing the lab results that come back from the lab company. Providers that wish to have a user copied on all labs that come in for their user profile can do that by going to Tools, User Preferences, choosing the Reroute Items category, and then making sure to set up the automatically CC all lab results to a particular user that they wish to be copied on lab results coming to their EMR. With those items set up, there are three ways to generate labs from MicroMD's EMR. The first way is to go into a patient's encounter. So I'll go ahead and generate a new encounter briefly. From the plan tab, whenever you are on the labs orders, you have the ability to generate lab requests here. Please note that upon initial login, you will not have your PCLS lab items in your common list. Those will be under the all list where you'll have to scroll down beyond the existing or standard lab components built into the EMR. And you'll begin to see your custom PCLS lab compendium items built in. Those are generated by order number or name. You can see your numbers that you may be familiar with, like order set 670, 307, 657, 950, etc. These are all built into the compendium automatically. For those that you commonly use, you'll want to go ahead and search them out, like say a 303, and then add that to your common list. This is one way to build your common list so that you're not having to search for those over and over. You can have a quick list here under common. Adding those is the same as you do throughout MicroMD on any other item. And you'll want to make sure to say the lab is being performed outside the clinic, but you do want to create an order and send it to the technician or group that's going to be drawing the specimen and preparing it for the lab company. So you'll want to make sure and set that up. Once you click OK, that's going to generate the order to the desktop of the assigned user or user group. So from desktop, your user will see an order here under their order section for processing the specimen. Before I get to that, let me point out the two other methods for generating lab requests. From medical information, you don't necessarily have to have an open encounter to generate a lab request. I can go in the chart to medical information, lab orders, and click add, or right click the white area and click add that way. To add a lab result, we'll bring up the same lab order screen that will come up when we process the order created from within the encounter, and we'll go over that in detail. The third way to generate a lab order is as long as your user account has access and security permissions from the desktop navigator to access orders, you can use the new order button to create a new lab order. Again, you get the same laboratory order window to complete or create a lab order. The only difference is that you would need to select your patient name. So all of these three methods allow you to create a lab order that would be generated out to your PCLS lab company. For the purpose of demonstration, we'll use the lab order request that came from our encounter. As the assigned user, when I double click on the lab order, I'm going to see what patient it's ordered for, what physician ordered it, and who it was assigned to. I'm also going to see 
the lab order that was requested. I want to go ahead and add something else to this panel because it doesn't really make sense to just send off medication. Now, notice with this lab order, there is some panel specific data. It's very important to keep your eye or watch for this red label because that means that customer particular information is going to be needed to process this lab. Failing to do so will result in the lab request being rejected. So when I see panel specific data is required, I simply click on the icon just below it and choose exactly what it tells me, which is panel specific data. In this case, it's wanting to know the patient's prescribed medications, and I can, I can enter those here. If you had another item that needed to be added, you would simply add a comma and just keep adding those items. Once complete, just click OK. Specimen source is how you obtained or, or how that particular item was obtained. Notice my drop-down list has multiple items, and that's coming from my common list and from what was chosen for this patient in the past. So if you'll build your common list, if you're commonly doing blood, venous, and urine, you'll have those at quick access using this drop-down arrow. Otherwise, you'll need to use the search book to find those. Collection date and time, quantity, how much was drawn. This is not necessarily required, but you can enter 0.5, 1 ml, whatever is appropriate. You can also add specimen comments here if needed. Finally, after you've made sure to fill out your specimen collection information, your panel specific data that's required, you'll want to set the specimen collection status to specimen collected. This is the first step in generating the order out the door to your lab company. You would choose the appropriate location for the lab. Order status will default to requested and that is appropriate. With, an, with a specimen collection status set to specimen collected and an order status set to requested, the system is automatically going to process this order. Without setting it to specimen collected, it will never move from a requested status. It's telling me that I'm missing certain information in the specimen um, source and or quantity values. It allows me to resend anyway if I want to, and I did. So now you can see that this not only is set to requested, but it's also indicating the date performed information as well. If we sit here long enough, you're going to see the status change. It's going to fall off my screen from requested, and it's going to move to a status of specimen collected, and eventually to specimen or request sent. The request has already been sent, and you can see that status here. Additionally, if for some reason you wanted to cancel this, you can right click on that row and set the status to canceled. You could also open it from the patient chart. I'm not going to set it here. I'm going to go ahead and say open the patient chart and the 2-9 order that was sent. So I'm going to go to my orders, lab orders, and I can see that on 2-9 right here, this is the one that was sent. I can double click on that. And I see that it's set to sent, but I want to go ahead and change it to canceled. So you can change your status here. And that would be important to know because sometimes you may get a requested uh, or a request that you sent rejected. This would come from the lab company indicating that maybe it's missing some information like panel specific data. And in that case, you would want to be able to update it by coming in, making any changes needed to this order, and then setting it back to a specimen collected and requested where it'll generate back out to your lab company. Also, um, in this case, I want to cancel an order. Maybe for, there's a reason to cancel an order. In this case, I can go ahead and do that right here and say yes, and it's going to send that message out to the lab company to show that order has been canceled. So they're not waiting on the specimen if we're never going to send it. So these statuses are important. It can never leave MicroMD without saying that the specimen is collected. 
and then the order status itself can be changed based on a communication from the lab company or a communication from the practice to the lab company, like a cancel request or a request sent. Things you would get from the lab company to the practice would be that the results have been received, which means they've sent them to you, or the request has been rejected. Maybe there's a reason for that, or it could be pending. Maybe something's taking a little longer. And finally, the print or ability to print your lab requisitions. If you come into a lab order form, you can actually print an e-rec from our system that will document and send out all the information needed for processing of the lab. Whether or not your lab company will accept these auto-generated e-requisitions is up to the lab company, so you would need to communicate with them to confirm this. So now that we know how to create the, the lab requisition or lab orders out to and update lab orders between the practice and the lab company, let's look at the results. Results come under the medical information tab under your lab results area. They also compile under test results here in your desktop navigator. So as you receive results, they'll automatically post to this section of your desktop navigator, just like your e-prescriptions coming in from pharmacies would come in. When a patient has lab results come in, those results will display below in a flow sheet. Here's a good example of how that would look. Notice that I have a December 14th column resulting in these particular tests. I also have a January 25th. I can see the items in red would be items that are either unexpected or out of range or out of normal range. The reason December 15th is dark blue and January 25th is not is because that's what I'm selected on at the very top. If I were to move to the January 25th, you would notice that that changed. Additionally, instead of seeing just the discrete data values, You'll have a PDF row that allows you to open up a PDF view of the report itself. And by double clicking on that report, you'll be able to the PDF view of the same results if desired. You can also use the PDF tools built in MicroMD to make notes if desired. Notes made in this document into this comment field can be searched when in the document manager in MicroMD. It also creates a tab here where anybody coming in will know that on this date and time this user made notes to that particular document manager document. I can also, instead of opening the document, make my notes here and those will display when anybody opens the lab itself. And you can mark it as viewed or if need be, if you need someone to do a task, go ahead and click a reminder and send it to someone on your staff or yourself about that patient. Whatever day you want it to activate, it can be today to schedule a two-week follow-up or in the future just to check on the patient, whatever the case is automatically it's telling you what test this task is related to and you can say please have patient return in two weeks for repeat labs and that can be sent to whoever you you want it to be sent to in this case we'll send it to ourselves and that would go ahead it can be created as an urgent task or a confidential task if needed and ex whatever information you want to populate and I can say okay so that creates the task on that account I'm just saying yes I understand that there's missing source information but we're resulted so that really doesn't matter and I'm gonna mark this as viewed I've sent my task off everything's done so I'm just gonna update this and indicate that this is completed 
what would happen with those steps is that order then or that test result falls off my desk. It's no longer a not viewed. It would be considered a viewed and, and resulted uh, or a completed task. There may be times when you see a PDF report that says final and then another one that says final corrected. So maybe the final was returned, but then they had to correct the result or information on it. And that is the only time you would see duplicated items like that. Otherwise, you would simply see a lab request and then a final report on that lab request, which would display as shown here. Again, you can use comments here or you can use comments here in the analysis comment and simply document that way. mark it as viewed, say OK, and that completes that lab. Everything files not only in the patient's medical information tab and will continue a flow sheet every time you run that same test so you can quickly compare the different levels like this, but it also stores in the patient's document manager the PDF versions of the reports. This concludes our training on sending lab requests, printing lab erecs, and reviewing results from your custom PCLS lab interface. If you have further questions, please contact us at support at medicalsoftwareinc.com or call us at 800-846-2900.